Hi everyone, welcome to this quick tutorial where I'll be showing you how to take PDF files, export them out of Revit and then rename them to the correct drawing number. So just to explain that further, if I zoom into this particular sheet here, you can see it's using the typical ISO 19650 naming convention. I haven't got any revisions applied to this, but this would be the same sort of process. So just to go through that drawing number convention, you can see here that we have the project name, and in this case it's a four digit character. Then we have the originator in here, which is in this case Excitec. Then we have the volume, 00, zero the level, 00, zero the document type, which in this case is a drawing. Then we have the role, which is architecture. And then we have the actual drawing number. Now, if I actually take a look at the way this has been named, you can see that we have a number of shared parameters to control things like the originator, volume and level and so on. But the project reference is actually directly taken from the project itself, the project uh, name. And we also have then a sheet number, which is the Revit sheet number. Now, the problem is, if I now start to write these out to PDF, they will not be written with this correct naming convention. And of course, if I'm trying to upload these to a CDE system, that's going to give me all sorts of problems. So we go to the print tool up here. And you can see here, I'm just using a simple PDF report writer. I'm creating separate files, so separate documents for each of those sheets. And I've already got a sheet set set up called set one, which contains all the documents. So I'll click OK here and we'll start to see these sheets now start to spool out. Uh, just so you can see these, I'll bring up the uh, Windows Explorer and you can now start to see the sheets appearing. Now, of course, as this happens, you'll notice that the naming convention is nowhere near correct. And we've got a couple of options, really. We could uh, just write the PDFs out with the Revit four digit sheet number or, of course, the project name and then the sheet number and the sheet name. But none of these are going to actually uh, match our ISO 19650 naming convention. And of course, this is where we can utilize something like Dynamo. So what I'm gonna do here is just show you the Dynamo script. I'm going to run the script first, just so we can see how it actually works. So let's just click run, and that's now done. So now if we just bring up the uh, drawings, you can now see they've all been renamed. So let's just take a look at one of these at random. Let's go for this 1241. So we'll let Windows open up the PDF. And of course, if I zoom in here, uh, we can see, in fact, uh, it has the, whoops, so let me show you again. In fact, it has the uh, drawing name 1240 in there. So clearly, uh, that's a real efficient way of actually naming these documents. Now, it'd be the same thing if I wrote out DWG. So I could then just simply get the DWGs and rename those. So let me just show you how that's actually working within Dynamo. So the first thing I'm actually doing here is I'm collecting all of the sheets and I'm extracting all of those shared parameters that build up the ISO 19650 naming convention. And of course, that just gives me a list such as this. Uh, what I'm then doing is you can see up here that I'm actually getting the project reference, which is the start of the naming convention, which in this case is uh, Bishopsgate or Bish in there. Uh, what we're then doing is just counting those. So I've got 32 of those and I'm creating a list of those in here. And then I'm concatenating all of those strings together. So when I concatenate these, that essentially recreates the ISO 19650 naming convention. Yeah, as you can see here. So what we're then doing is we're using this code block here to take that and append the file path to it. So you can see here, I've now got that nice naming convention with PDF at the end, and I'm simply taking the original file path through. So essentially this code block has generated the file path and the file name of the correct document naming convention. What's then happening here is I'm then going ahead and searching for these particular documents from a directory. Now, the idea here is you can see that I'm actually getting the contents of the directory in here. Now, of course, there could be all sorts of stuff going on in that directory, and that's the reason why I'm searching for all of these uh, join numbers in here. And you can see I've got like a bit of a, uh, a kind of a wildcard search in here. So we're simply trying to collect all the documents that have that join number included in there. So once we've done that, we go ahead and flatten that list out. And of course, what we've now got here is the original document name. OK, so just to reiterate that, we've got the new document name here and the original document name here. 
And then we've got a real simple Python script. If I just open this up so you can see it, you can see there's no uh, frills and spills here at all. Um, what I'm doing is I'm importing the operating system so we can utilize that in Iron Python. I'm then declaring two new lists. So going in to in zero, we have the new names yeah, that have been generated here. Going into in one over here, we have the old names. Um, then I've just got an output called test. You don't really need that. And then you can see here that I'm putting this into a loop. So I'm saying for i comma j in zip new and old. Now what this does, the zip option is going to change the structure of the list. So we have pairs. What I'm then doing is I'm then saying, well, okay, uh, using the operating system rename option here, we take the old name, which is held in J, which is here, and the new name, which is held in I, and go ahead and rename all the documents. And that's it. And as I say, I've just got an out uh, equaling test here, which just gives me that list. Again, you don't really need that. And that's the Dynamo script. So very useful. Um, obviously saves a lot of time if you have to uh, publish PDFs and be able to upload those uh, to CDE systems. As I've said, this will work for any document. So it could be DWG files that you're exporting out of Revit, images, you know, whatever it is. Okay, hope that's been useful.